<laughs> All right, I think that's working. Great day. Today is a great day for the micro soldering community. This is It's a great day for Brandon Trujillo. It's a great day for <laughs> Brandon Trujillo. So last night, less, less than 24 hours ago, I sat in this chair with this phone that I told you guys was unrecoverable newborn pictures. This guy's never going to see this picture again because of iPhone 7 baseband CPU, the MDM Qualcomm chip. That thing goes bad, which it does go bad in a way that is problematic internal to the chip and that that chip is unique to the device and that there was no path to data. In fact, the video description says iPhone 7 baseband <laughs> CPU faults are not recoverable. Have to go back and uh, edit that. Yeah, I, well, I just did. I made this one say are now recoverable. And look at this. This couldn't be better news. I'm so excited to call up Brandon and and let him know that this is re this is recoverable. So this is a great 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 day. And so we're going to tell you about you know what's the solution then? How is this stuff? that was 24 hours ago, completely off the table, <laughs> is now working and we think this is gonna be um, <laughs> a great solution. So, and it's all thanks to the micro soldering worldwide community working together, which I totally love. It takes a village and we're gonna um, kind of talk about how this evolved. So, um, so Mark, why is that thing working now, whereas yesterday it, it was not? What's the difference? Um, well, now when it boots up, <clears throat> it doesn't try to power on the baseband CPU and have the baseband CPU say, fuck you, I got a short, I can't do that shit. Okay, so what, what the uh, news flash was, um, early this morning, I got an email from a guy that I don't know, but I've heard of around the community, and this is a guy whose name is Rico Serba. So Federico, Federico. Well, Federico. Rico. yeah, Federico. Um, so, and he lives in the UK, I think. No, and he's in Mexico. Is he? Yeah, the other guy was in the UK. No, he's in the UK. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's in Mexico. Really? Well, he, I know he, he works with uh, Armando. Oh, well. Yeah, well, okay, we don't really know where you are, Rico. Pretty sure I heard UK guy reference his uh, friend Frederico from Mexico. From Mexico? Yeah. No, I, I maybe, thought maybe I thought know. he was the guy referencing a different guy that's from Mexico. That's what I think is going on. This maybe. is totally off topic. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> All right, so uh, so but here's where I recognize his name. I'm pretty sure that Armando, who we love Armando from Miami. Yeah, who I does did, good I didn't work. even get to meet him. I wasn't here for that class. You weren't? No. Oh I my didn't, God, he's I, like the best guy. I know. I wanted to ask him all about his Mantis Elite. Yes! <laughs> yes, yes, Armando. You know, so he came up for the course uh, in very early on. And he, yeah, he was, was so like funny. The one before I came. He was so funny because he was just like, I want to see if this white lady can actually do long screw damage. And then he was like, well done. <laughs> and he was like, all right, that's all I wanted to know. <laughs> and so, um, but he's he's doing a course now, which is great because he um, is a native, you know, Spanish speaker. And so I, yeah, I that, think that that's is, what Yeah, that is great. And so he's teamed up with this guy, Rico, and they're doing their course in my, I believe in Miami. And then it's also in London. This guy's totally in London. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but anyway, so Rico said, hey, you know what? I watched your video last night where uh, struggling with the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus baseband CPU internally being shorted, which is true. Just like we talked about last night, this is a common signature problem and a phone will not boot if it's an iPhone 6S or later. It will not boot if it doesn't have a functional baseband CPU. So it's got to have baseband power and baseband CPU has to be functional. Uh, the assumption, the assumption that I certainly had, <laughs> what we, is that it had to be the native baseband CPU. And today we learned that that is not the case. Now, yeah. why would, why did you and I and everybody else, except for a couple of other guys that were going, maybe not, why do you think the whole world operated under the assumption that it had to be the native baseband CPU? Well, because we know that baseband CPU is involved in the 
encryption, the initial encryption, or, or generating the encryption keys for the data on an iPhone. So it, it logically made sense that it would also be required for decrypting that during boot up. Right, yep. And so with the iPhone 6, I can remember fixing iPhone 6 for data recovery and whenever the baseband power chip or the baseband CPU was all corroded, yeah, fucking take it off. Windshield wiper that right yeah, off you the board <laughs> because it wasn't required to get that thing to boot. In yeah. fact, I was gonna do the stream that I was gonna do tonight was Mark and Jessa play iPhone Jenga, where we uh, <laughs> see what is the skeleton set of chips that are really required for a phone to boot, which I think we pretty much know, but we've never actually done it. Yeah, you know? it's still theory. Yeah, it's still theory. So, but on the six, it would have been like, nope, baseband is not important. It's not important unless you want to ask the phone to update. So in the iPhone six, baseband is not required at all for boot, but it is required for update. Now, what do we know about the baseband CPU itself is that it does have a hard coded unique identifier in that is burned into that chip at manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And so what we know from people that do iCloud unlocking and chip transfer stuff. <laughs> what? <laughs> Lewis, Mark, when did you <laughs> control Z puberty? <laughs> <laughs> Cecilia asked me to shave, so I did. So he did. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, so the... Um, you know, so the so the idea is that because the iPhone six would would boot up just fine with no baseband, but it would not update unless it had um, it had the baseband circuit. So that's kind of what what sort of told us that the device needed to check in with the baseband CPU when it was resetting. Um, resetting encryption keys for uh you know re restore or things that were things that were were like that but not day-to-day -day operations then along came the 6s so the 6s was a different change so i can remember that there was one early on like one of the first 6s that you've ever seen like oh my god look this is a new phone it's the 6s water damage data recovery and as usual, you know, kicked off the heavily corroded baseband PMIC. That solved the phone, but it would boot loop. Mm -hmm. So it would just sit there and boot loop, boot loop, boot loop, just like the iPhone 7 does. So it would boot loop, boot loop, <laughs> boot loop. And there was nothing else wrong with it. So it was like, why is this phone boot looping? And so I thought, I'm going to ask it to update. Now I know from the 6 that if you're going to ask it to update, it needs to have the baseband power chip, so I had to get and another one. If it one. doesn't have that, you get error, error negative, negative one. one. Yeah, error minus one. So I put on a fresh one, and guess what happened? Booted right up. Yeah. So, so that's what taught me that baseband CPU for the 6S, the baseband function, is required now for booting. Well, so, you know. Baseband chips are there, is required. Right, baseband function, <laughs> baseband, some baseband yeah, was, function. I mean, that was, that was the assumption, is that like, right. you have to have a working baseband. Right, right, right. So, um, so then, so that's what's going on. Now there's this whole community that we're totally not involved in, of iCloud unlockers. Mm -hmm. So what do those guys do all day? They, they figure out what is required to make this pretty good board that's iCloud locked, a working board using this completely pile of shit board that will never be a working phone again. So they Chip, they chip figure swappers, out, so yeah, donor board receiver boards. Which chips do I need to move over to make this iCloud locked board work from this board that got run over? Right, and so the general consensus that, that from that community has, uh, has been for a long time, like since the iPhone Five, you know, like mm -hmm. since the iPhone five turned to the iPhone six, was that you needed for the phone to, to to successfully know who he was and boot up and restore. You needed the CPU, you needed the baseband CPU, you needed the flash memory NAND chip, and that you needed the EEPROM. And then a long time, and then some time went by, and 
Uh, and then the NAND reprogrammers kind of showed up. Mm -hmm. And so then we kind of learned like, oh, you can kind of, you can, you can take the original NAND and as long as you can read the number. Yeah, as long as can, the serial number is still there. As long as you can read that number, you can take another flash memory chip and you can program it. So you don't have to have the unique native NAND, but you do have to be able to swap, um, swap over the, the actual number. So the number is important. And so from there, um, the, the, what? Lewis just wants to know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> you have to wait until the end. We're, we're not telling you the answer today. Please check back tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Paul needs to know right now. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Do you have a, how many, how many cases are sitting there? Streams In fact, I feel like just Stream, like. Streams yeah, ending exactly. now, Lewis. Like, mail me that's all right. of the ones you have. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Like, you know, I, I can't believe what words you're seeing while you're wearing the shirt. What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, isn't it tempting to just be like, well, it's late. We'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> it, it, it is fucking late. Let's get to the point. I know exactly. Where right? are we at? I, I don't. Know. I don't remember. Doesn't matter. Uh, so the the bottom line here is that um, is that there's so many good ideas that are um, where one person has some some suggestion but they don't try it another person tries it but it doesn't work another person edits that you know that kind of goes on a long time like mm -hmm. mark has had a bunch of good ideas you know like your idea about the um you know the blame it on the nand stuff you know like that that is like you know it's a really good idea but we're never going to get around to actually doing it you know because it kind of seems <laughs> low yield so i liked your point when i when i was you know kind of asking earlier like what's the what's the point um so what was it wait you're like i don't remember i have no idea with, with the the, the, the uh, no the idea that when communities work together and they oh. share information and they and they talk about things that it's it's when you might have something that you've thought about and you know like your nand idea you know but it's like i'm not going to actually get around to doing it it's not going to go up my priorities yeah i don't think it's going to work and i got yeah. other shit to do exactly i don't think it's going to work and i got other shit to do and then somebody mentions something else and you think hey that's if that worked then that means this is more likely to work and mm -hmm. that's the way that human beings interact and that's what i think is really beneficial about these these groups so um so what i you know when i went to the myrtle beach conference i loved meeting guess who you'll never guess uh mark who refuses to guess yeah i met <laughs> i hung out with a guy for hours a couple of hours over a few a few different days and really enjoyed talking to him um, and and kind of sharing information and kind of having a colleague you know that works on solving these same problems all day and that guy worked for a company called called drive savers wow and it was great so weird you met him on tinder <laughs> Oh my god and it was great and then i met another guy who works for a company called uh called kroll on track also doing data recovery who i hung out with for hours and hours and hours so what's up mike and steve i'm sure you're watching the stream uh so it, and it was you know i i actually well of course they of course they will you know so uh it was um, it was really great and it really just kind of reminded me no matter what kind of you know shit you you talk at the end of the day we're all working on solving these same problems and I really love the micro soldering community and it's it's kind of its home has been a little bit threatened lately so what do you think about about uh, community where does the community live I I think that um Communities like the the worldwide micro soldering community are like the the value in that is in the members themselves mm -hmm. and and that um, the actual communities where these people gather together to share information online mm -hmm. um, should should always be owned 
fully by the members of the community and, and never be owned by corporate interests. Yeah, by third third parties that are not active members. Yeah, I, yeah. I totally agree. Uh, so, um, so if you have something to share um, that can, you know, a, a problem that you're working on, that you try something weird and it works, share. Is if you're working on something and it doesn't work, share. Because you know, one of the other things we were talking about is when when somebody shares a negative finding. You know, um, my old my old mentor in graduate school started an entire online journal called Negative Observations in uh, you know uh, GI oncology. No go. You know, so he had this whole thing, like if you did a whole study and it didn't work out, which is not publishable, you just write up, don't ever try this again. You know, like this is not associated with that at all in any way, period. And it just saves time. So I love the sharing of, hey, I tried this thing. So with this whole baseband problem, I love that Aaron Harrington, uh, so he posted uh, sharing information online a while ago, like, hey, he solved one with um, injecting the voltage into the chip, which what that probably did was, uh, you know, maybe maybe burn into the chip and 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 clear up some sort of shard of metal yeah. or something like I've, that. I've tried it like a half dozen times. And yeah, and I tried it yesterday. In fact, what I love about this phone is I as my notes from this morning are still here. Like you can see, I started. I wrote down these notes. Look, this is the same case. Yeah. Presentation, baseband <laughs> boot loop. The guy wants data findings short on PP, uh, you know, the, the P baseband PMU to PMU AMUX2, which was relieved with replacement of the power of the PMD chip, saved PMD for analysis. And then short number two on PP1BO LD09, also relieved with the PMD replacement, which is unusual. That short is usually LD09. internal. LD09. LD09, yeah, which was internal to the. To the to the baseband, uh, PMIC. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, like so PMIC. hard for me. The old PMIC. And number three, it had a short on the one uh, vo SMPS5, which was internal to the baseband CPU. So this morning, with that phone to catch you up, I uh, chased after these shorts. I solved two of them by changing the baseband power chip, and then the existing. Deal breaker was still there, the short internal to the baseband CPU. So I took off the baseband CPU, and this morning before class started at like 7 a.m., I was sitting here freeze spraying the baseband CPU chip, trying to find <laughs> out where, it, I had wires soldered to it, it was <laughs> upside down, freeze spraying it, trying to see where was it getting hot. I was so gonna, like, I was much gonna, work. So much work, I was gonna cut out the little spot and get that thing to work again, because we know for sure that the baseband CPU is unique to the device and it contains a um, ID that we believe is part of the secure enclave that unlocks the phone. And what do we think now? Uh, now, now we think that it is required for the generation of the encryption keys or, or it's required in the uh, like um, verification with Apple servers that this device is allowed to install something on it. Um, it one of those, but it is not involved in the decryption of the data. Right, so that's the shocker, that a chip that is, uh, you know, I, I think it's even in like the white papers that say like, you know, it's part of the secure, that kind of describes that yeah, a little I, bit. Yeah, I, I bet you the uh, Apple support communities would tell you that, well, that yeah, it's exactly. Oh yes, you know. <laughs> um, but it's a chip that definitely has a, uh, a unique uh, number that's burned into the chip and therefore it cannot be replaced and you can't make a duplicate of that. So because of that, you know, it never, it never ever occurred to me to say, hey, why don't we take a chip that we know that that function is required for the phone to boot because of the story of the 6S. I know that baseband is required for the phone to boot. I'm gonna take the, the brain of that, the baseband CPU that I know contains a unique identifier I'm gonna just frisbee that over there and get a random one from some other phone that's got some mismatched number 
Re take that off, reball it, solder it on this phone, and see if that phone will boot up. Never, I would have never, never thought that that would work in a million years. And if you told me, uh, you know, hey, why don't you try that? I would have been like, nope, that sounds like a massive waste of time. Would you have ever thought to, to do that? I, I've thought to do that before. It, what other kind of time wasting ideas do you have in the I, in I the think thing? of shit all the time that I'm like, that's fucking stupid. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Well, like <laughs> me, like I was like, well, you're gonna figure out how this thing cracks by putting nail polish on it. And see where it cracks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Free spraying the chip of those upside down. That, like the idea had occurred to me. Right. But you know, it's the never gonna work. The idea to replace one of these uh, one V eight SD RAM shorts with a different CPU has occurred to me too. But I'm like, no. Oh yeah. Well, that one. That probably one. Probably never gonna work. So I'm not gonna go. I'm. I'm gonna right. work on this pile of shit I have that actually I can solve. Right. Right. Yep. So. Uh, so. So then it's like, well, then under what circumstance would that occur to somebody and be a feasible idea? And it's when you're doing this, and this is where this came from. So the idea is, um, so, uh, so Rico shared, let's see, what was he talking about? You know, kind of like, what made you think to do that? And he said that um, in the past, he had a, phone, a 6S, so he never tried it on a 7. So a 6S for data recovery, and to do data recovery on that one, for whatever reason, he was doing the chip transfer technique. So if you're gonna transfer chips from a, a donor board to a receiver board, you need to transfer the CPU. So transfer the CPU. You need to transfer the NAND. Transfer the NAND. You need to transfer the EEPROM chip. So transfer that. And then the assumption is that you also need to transfer the baseband CPU because it contains that last identifier that's unique. So, I can see this. If you've done all that, if you've transferred CPU, you've transferred NAND, you've transferred EEPROM, before you get the baseband CPU off, get the other one off, turn it over, clean it up, reball it, slider, before you do that, you might say, let me just turn it on and see if it'll work. And so that's what he did. So he, tr he was doing one of those chip transfer data recoveries and he transplanted everything except for the baseband CPU. Uh, and he had an inkling that from the iCloud locking community that maybe you didn't need it for it to boot up for data. Mm -hmm. That maybe the only reason they're transferring is because they need to restore them. They always need to restore them. Right. So, you know, maybe you don't need it for data. So he tried it in the 6S and it worked. So if it works in the 6S, then that kind of promotes the idea that it's gonna work in the 7. And so uh, he sent me this email this morning that just said, um, you know, hey, I have, uh, I have a 6S where I got it to boot for data recovery with a mismatched baseband CPU from some other phone with a totally different number and it booted for data. Now, of course, it's not going to restore and it's not going to make it's not going to be able to make cell calls because it's missing its native uh, baseband CPU. But it will boot to get the pictures off, so it'll boot for data. So, um, so I wrote back to him, are you sure it wasn't a 6? You know, because a 6, of course, it doesn't need baseband. Uh, are you sure it was a 6S? And he's like, yeah. And he showed me a picture, and then I saw, a, you know, some, some posts about it. So uh, in the middle of the day, during the middle of the course, I said, hey, Mark, this one that I had sitting on my desk from this morning that I'd already taken off the baseband CPU, same one from last night. What happens if you just slap a baseband CPU from some other phone on there? So you went in the back and did you think it would work? Did you think it was worth a try? Uh, I felt like it was definitely worth a try. The, the proof of concept with the 6S. Right, the 6S was the magic. Yep, that, that's what made it worth my time. Right. And now the 6S, in my experience, I don't think I've ever had a 6S for data recovery that required, that ever had anything wrong with baseband CPU. What baseband, doesn't really get there. It doesn't, it doesn't and, get and there. And they don't fail. And they don't fail, right. So I don't, so this experience of the folks having with 6S, you know, uh, transferring around baseband CPU, it's not really a failure point. So I'm not sure how that would come up. We haven't seen that. Yeah. So. 
You go back there, you see that Jess has done a beautiful job taking off the baseband CPU. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how many pads they are, but I feel like 99% <laughs> of the necessary ones were good. I only, had to <laughs> only had to place two jumpers in the center of the chip. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so then you got one off of, and this was something we didn't know about, like, Carrier. You know, we didn't even know the Carrier. Oh, yeah. Who well, is the Carrier for this song? Do we know? So we, we uh, did you take it off of the sprint now? <laughs> <laughs> sprint. So that's one of the questions that 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 I had, which was. Um, oh yeah, home button's not working. So good yeah. luck with that. Yeah. You know. So, uh, was, what if, big big, trying, big Bixby sandal? Yeah, hit it a few more times. <laughs> I'll make it work. That is so cute. Oh look at the baby! Oh, Isn't that, that cute? Oh dear God! I can't believe you took a picture. <laughs> wow! Look at that! <laughs> oh my God! <coughs> so <coughs> I didn't know, and I still don't know. This is an open question for the community: Does the donor mismatched baseband CPU, the MDM Qualcomm chip that you put on there, does it a half? Does it? Can it be brand new? Does it have to be programmed in some way? I don't know. Does it have to be matched from a phone that's the same carrier? I'm going to venture I'm, guess. I'm going to say with probably not. I'm going to say probably not too because the chances that, that both of those right, are were spread. the shittiest carrier I know. in existence. I, no, no, I was, I was going to say <laughs> the chance that the eBay phone that I bought to be the known good, which was Sprint, <laughs> and the chance that a guy seeking data recovery is all, <laughs> right. also Sprint. Yeah, Sprint customers do yeah, not sprint, pay for data recovery. Sprint recovered. customers do not, are, are, <laughs> that guy's not going to be a Sprint customer. So, you know, we're going to guess. We can look it up uh, later to see what carrier that actually is. But uh, that we used a Sprint one, and that seemed to be working. Um, so then you put it on, and... Came out here in front here. of the whole class. We were talking about these signature problems, and it was really ex it was one of the more exciting times. I mean, yeah. it really, really was because you kind of knew like if this guy says that he had a 6S that booted, you know. And to be fair, uh, you know, it does take a village. So Rico was, um, you know, I I did say, hey, we want to make sure that we give credit to the right folks. And so Rico says that he kind of. It, you know, thought I'm really going to actually do this and try on the 6S um, after he was kind of working together and having a conversation with Rulemo, who I don't know, and I have no, I really don't know who that is. I feel like I would remember that name. Yeah, Rulemo. <laughs> so we're going to put links to the folks that really helped the community solve this problem in this video so that you can check out their channels, uh, their Instagram. We'll put all of those links in the description uh, after we after we figure all that out, and then somewhere else that sounds like there's uh, another guy who it, who it seems like um, uh, has 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 posted um, that he's he's been doing the transfer of mismatched baseband CPU for a while and shared that on GSM hosting, and let's see. Um, yeah, so that's Osman Shani, who we also don't don't know. So you know, it's it's great to just have folks from all over the world. I mean, this guy is this guy's definitely in the in, he's in London, and you know, from folks from all over the world. Yeah, so the yeah. Rulemo, I don't know who that is. We'll have to look up that guy. So thank you so much to you guys that have found out something that was cool and just you know even if it's just hey it worked on a 6s that's so valuable because that's what inspires people to be like then i'm doing it on the seven rather than going yeah maybe one day i mean that's that's fantastic and you know thanks to mark for con taking the time today to actually <laughs> confirm it on this seven you know is is fantastic so it is absolutely confirmed right here that if you take a mismatch some other phones baseband CPU, baseband CPU that has its own mismatched unique identifier burned into it, that if you install that in the place of a damaged, internally shorted iPhone 7 Qualcomm baseband CPU, 
You can frisbee that one away with its unique identifier. You don't have to read it. You don't have to transfer anything. All you have to do is get a donor baseband CPU, reball it, and solder it in place. And the boot looping, error 4013, you know, anything that is in that huge category of baseband CPU faults, any of those shorts, you know, all of them, they're just frisbee that chip away, get a new one, and the phone can not have a working home button. <laughs> the phone boots up and, you know, we were able to uh, recover all the data. Did you test anything else out with this one to see? Um, I tested that the anything? data could be extracted. Did, did we even, yeah, so we, we I don't mean, I, when When we first booted it up, it had battery gas gauge problems mm -hmm. and was boot looping. So, you know, my, my first thought was, well, that's probably not gas gauge. So I put it like in airplane mode mm -hmm. um, and that didn't help. So, so you were putting it in airplane mode so that in, you know, in case there was a, Hey, wait a minute. That's not the, Hey, that's an imposter face. <laughs> yeah. You turn yeah. it off everybody. That's what I was afraid of when it, this phone booted up and it did, it had gas gauge. What was it? Tigris or the battery? The battery. Okay. So it was having gas gauge errors, meaning it's rebooting. And I was like, ah, it's going to be throwing error <coughs> messages from realizing that it's got a mismatched baseband CPU yeah. and that that's going to corrupt the NAND. And so get the pictures, you know, yep. that, so that took that passcode off so that it would connect faster and turned airplane mode on, still boot looping, check the logs and is definitely uh, gas gauge stuff. So new battery and it's good to go. It is still in airplane mode though. Yeah. All right. Um, so, so send us all your boot looping. Yes. So <laughs> yeah, if you've got data that's stuck on your iPhone seven now because it's boot looping, all the boot looping, now we are no longer laid out in the back of iPad rehab on the snow, banging our heads <laughs> on all of these goddamn iPhone sevens, having no idea what's wrong with them. We have really cleaned up in here. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And I hope that I want to come back and watch this video again next year when you have to go through hell, <laughs> hell yeah. month of just the new model comes out and you're like, I have no idea. Is this, there's nothing that no clues anywhere. <laughs> and all of the boot looping iPhone seven and seven plus now have a solution. All the era 4013 now have a solution. Um, to be clear, you will not be able to make this be a phone again. So this is a solution for data recovery only. So you're not going to be able to make it be a phone again. I guess you could make it be an iPod touch again. You know, if you've got a boot looping one, if you yeah. were to do this switch, it would at least have, you could make it be a camera and that's all iPhones are anyway, right? I connect to the Wi-Fi, download my uh, Spotify playlist. Does it connect to Wi-Fi with the, with the, you know, we don't know. Oh. We'll have to. So we're gonna. We wanted to just kind of share this good news, and especially to thank the community for, you know, sharing. Thanks, you know, sharing your information. That is so so important. As these phones become more and more complex, you know, those little findings, that little experiment. You know, like if the if anything had come of the dumb idea I had of chasing down free spray to drill out the short in the chip. You know, things like that. Any kind of cool little thing that you discover really pushes the ball forward as we all have to solve harder and harder problems. And it's, it feels great now because the iPhone seven problems, I mean, I don't know, how many times I'm telling Lewis, like I'm going to kill myself with the iPhone sevens, every <laughs> single one of them boot loops and they've got parts issues and oh my God, it's just, it's just so crazy. Um, should we do it in a Faraday cage? Uh, no, apparently not. Does it blend? I don't know. Sure about um, Yes. So, uh, test Wi-Fi now. We, yeah, gotta we take it off airplane mode. See if it connects. Well, we gotta get a home button. No, you just slide this. Okay. Yeah. All right. There you go. Play game. Walk here. Watch this movie. Yeah. Well, now you just hit the home button. Duh. <laughs> oh well. Oh, um, now we can I'm, play Minion Rush. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll what test we're gonna, that out. What we're gonna do is go get some sleep because we have been in <laughs> these chairs for its course week, you oh know, practical God. board repair school week. I'm done with this day. And it was another amazingly long, long, long day. Mark needs a beer. Jessa needs a bed. 
and uh, and let's go. So we're 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 super excited. We're gonna come back with another one in the future when we're not at the end of an 18 hour day. Yeah, and we'll show the whole process. We will show you how to. Just so will, I'll be in Florida. <laughs> All right, here, I wanna know though, here, make this, make this work. Get the, get the home button thingy going. All right, let's see. All let's right, see. let's read what's up with chat. Um, clean moods off, Wi-Fi. So does yeah, it Wi-Fi connect? Works. Does it connect? Does it if see it the sees network? If it sees networks, it's going to connect. Right, there it is. iPad rehab. All right. So Wi-Fi works even with the wrong baseband. What does it say for settings and stuff? Um, if you go into uh, like about, I think it's going to. Um, Verizon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Verizon. Verizon. They're like they're like modem firmware. <laughs> <laughs> and that's interesting. The modem modem firmware. Modem firmware. And that's that. Ronnie mentioned that he he had suspected that this might work because he's seen them before where um, it boots up but has no service and modem firmware is empty. Mm -hmm. So like that was gotcha. His thought yes. Process. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That is very cool. Alrighty, so this was a great one for the community. And if you, we will do one on stream. The next one that we have. Um, and we are we were just super excited we wanted to just share the good news there's so many times where you're just hating board repair and it's so frustrating so it is wonderful to have a time where there's a giant leap forward for the whole community just i i was going to have to tell these people that they'll never see those baby pictures again that was on the plan after um, being, you know, it had three shorts in the baseband circuit, you know, and now this thing is booted and we're going to be able to, to give them back those pictures. So many people that are, um, going to have this problem happen because it's still the flexion based fault. So as these phones age, so many more of them are going to come down with this. So on the, on the heels of you know a lot of struggle it is great to finally have some good news and it's really great to be part of a wonderful community of people that don't have the kind of nitpicky competitive you know i'm not going to tell you anything hey that was my idea first you know that's that's largely absent in this in this community and and i really really love how academic it is it reminds me of of the way things are in grad school and just really really couldn't be happier so if you have something to share you can always go to ipad rehab it takes a village free open to the public anybody can post anything in there uh we'll post things in there like this news so uh definitely definitely share all right lewis you need to listen yeah this entire video no solution posted uh, Lewis has tuned back in <laughs> thinking surely they're at the end and that he's, he's looking to see if we're soldering. Yeah. <laughs> you know Lewis. what, Lewis? It was the coil! <laughs> yep. Replace baseband coil. Yep. Problem all, solved. All of them. Yes, all of the coils. Replace them all with caps. Re replace them all with caps, yes. It was the baseband coil. If, if you skip to the end. Replace baseband coil. 100% tested working, bro. See you next time.